Hi, everybody. Welcome to our session today, Data Labeling Service, with Gangan Kapoor, Sruchi Matur, and Ranjit Gupta. We hope you enjoy this workshop. It's going to be a full day. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A today, and we'll answer them through the session or live as we work run through. Without further ado, I'll hand you over to the team for the session today. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's live labs session of using OCI data labeling service and vision. My name is Gagandeep Kapoor. I, along with Shruti Mathur and Ranjit Gupta, will try to familiarize you with both vision and data labeling service. We will cover the basics and usage of the services followed by the demo covering the same. Let us start by discussing what is data labeling. Data labeling, as the name suggests, it is labeling of data. So it is the process of categorizing the documents, images, or text files, or identifying some objects within these. So once we have the labeled data, then that same data can be fed to train AI and machine learning models. Now, let me illustrate this with the help of an example. So here you see that there are uh, these fruits, they are randomly placed and we have the apples here. We, if we can see this, this image has only one apple, this has multiple apples and these, this image has apples which, uh, which have different color. Similarly, we have oranges in, uh, some of them are half cut and some of them they're uh, put together in a basket. So now, if we have to train our model, we have to teach the system, then we have to take all the scenarios into account and then we label these images. So all the apples. Kagan, sorry to uh, interrupt. I think you're, you're having some problems. Uh, your screen is not refreshing properly, at least for me. Okay, just let me uh, reshare. Is my screen visible now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so now the moment we categorize these apples and oranges, so this is called data labeling. So to all the images we have, uh, the images which contain apple, we, we have labeled them as apples and the other images we have labeled them oranges. Now let's talk about this AI and ML project lifecycle. So these are the buzzwords uh, these days, AI and ML. But for the systems to work properly, or we are saying artificially intelligent systems. So for the system to behave intelligently, we have to train these systems. And how the training works is we have to feed these systems with data. And that is where the data labeling kicks in. We have the labeled data, we feed it to the system, the system learns from that. And so the system is able to categorize all the future, let's say records according to the labeled data. So when we are feeding this, so the data is analyzed and then we build and train the model. And once the model is deployed, after that we, we, uh, we test our model by giving the records and verifying whether the model is accurate or not. If let's say the model is not accurate, then again, we come back to a labeling data. We can see if there is some, if, if we need to refine our data and then the same process continues. Now this image <clears throat> represents the time spent on different activities in our AI and ML uh, pipeline. So as you can see here, the majority of the time goes into data labeling and data cleaning. So that is why data labeling is very important. If our data is uh, not, <clears throat> not labeled properly, then the models will not learn as per our wish and will not get the desired results. So this is a key thing. We should, we should be uh, utmost, uh, this one, we should put utmost effort while labeling the data and we should make sure that uh, whatever we are uh, doing, it is in line with, with our goal. 
So this is the interface of the data labeling service. So uh, on this screen, we have some data sets listed for the people who are not aware of what data set is. A data set is a core to uh, data labeling. It is a collection of records. Now, by records, I mean uh, images, the text files or documents. So this, these are the files on which we have to work. Once the labeling is done, they'll, that will be called labeled data. So data set can consist of labeled data as well as the unlabeled data. And here on the screen, if we, uh, we, we see this import data set option is also there. So using data labeling, <clears throat> we can label the fresh data as well as if there is, if we have a uh, labeled data, we can relabel that as well. Because in, in my previous slide, I spoke that let's say if, uh, when we are training, uh, when we have uh, training, when we are training the model, and we are analyzing the results there. If we feel that our results are not up to the mark, the model is not accurate, then we have to revisit our labeled data. This is where the import data set comes into picture. Whatever the labeled data you have, you import it in the OCI data labeling service, and then you make some changes or whatever. Uh, modifications are required we can go ahead with that and the uh, the type of data or the data sets can be broadly classified into three categories first one being the images uh, image data set which contains the images other one is text which contains the txt files and then lastly it is document which contains pdfs as well as the images so by document we mean the rich data now, this is one of the examples from the image labeling. So within image uh, labeling also, there are uh, two categories. One is image classification and other is object detection. Image classification means that we are classifying the image as a whole. So uh, if you recall, uh, in the beginning, I said the data labeling is a process to categorize the records or identifying the objects within records so this image classification is classifying the uh, records so as a whole we will i uh, will categorize this okay that this particular image belongs to let's say this pituitary tumor on the right hand side we have the four labels so these labels are those with what we will classify our documents with for example this uh, this one's uh, glioma tumor is there and so okay let me just uh let me just tell you what where this things where this things these things come into picture we all have been through 2020 where we saw this pandemic hitting uh, the world so now with such a heavy load of patients it was actually impossible it was next to impossible that each and every person got the attention of the medical representative it's the people had gone uh, i mean uh, people had undergone numerous scans and x-rays so not all the x-rays were paid attention to by the medical representatives representatives because of the sheer workload now in such cases if we create a labeled data let's say we categorize the x-rays or scans that okay if there is this kind of pattern that we observe within one image if we train our models in such a way then there is no need for a medical representative to check all the x-rays the our models can automatically tell us whether this X-ray belong a particular X-ray belongs to a category of uh, a, of a particular disease or not. So this is what uh, I mean, this example illustrates. So uh, the, there's uh, the people who are labeling these kind of records. They are uh, the experts in their field in the medical field with respect to a particular let's say disease. So they identify whether these X-rays belong to a, uh, this disease or not. And once once the data is created, and the same is uh, fed into the models. Now, this example is for the object detection here. What we are doing is we are not categorizing the image as a whole, but we are finding the objects. So here, the example that we have here is we are uh, we are doing the object uh, face detection in, in an image. So here we have labeled the people uh, on the right hand side. You can see the labels. These are names that we have given. And then we have used these names to identify the people here. Similarly, the use cases can be uh, we can uh, we can build a data set that corresponds to the traffic uh, conditions. So if we have, let's say, if we if we want to automate uh, the these the cars, so the driverless cars. So there we have to input the, uh, to the system that, OK, what is red light? What is green light? What is a barricade vehicle? So all those things we can label within an image indicating, uh, let's say, potholes, barricades, all those things. 
Next is the text labeling. Again, within text labeling, there are two categories. One is text, text classification and another is NER or entity extraction. NER means named entity recognition that I'll be covering in the next slide. So as image classification, this text classification is also categorizing the record as a whole. So here we are. Uh, so this is one piece of text that we have. We can uh, give, we can assign labels to this particular uh, text. For, for now, we have this uh, demo labels as L1 and L2. So it can be anything like whether this is an uh, extract from a book, if it is an extract from an advertisement, all those things, we can categorize those. And this is the next thing uh, that is the named entity extraction or this one. I mean, this is entity extraction we called or NER that named entity uh, record is there. Uh, so what is happening over here is within this document now, we are identifying the, the, the way in object detection, we identify the objects within an image. Here we are identifying the pieces of text within a whole document so if you see on the uh, left hand side the very first label that we have that is joseph rudyard kipling here we have given the uh, author so this is an author so uh, the the jungle book here that you see here this is a book so we have we are now identifying the pieces of text within a uh, within a record so this is this can be very much useful uh, i'm sure that we people uh, in in our day to day life whenever we are doing online shopping or anyway we are asked for a feedback so whatever uh, comment or tweet or whatever we put in there so that that undergoes uh, this one uh, i mean uh, that is analyzed and then the reviews they are categorized as positive and negative and so there are some keywords let's say i write great product um, it's uh, the packaging was very good so all these are positive reviews on the other hand if i say that this is not up to the mark not as per expectations all then those are categorized as negative reviews and how are they they identified like this only that when, whenever we are doing uh this one data labeling there we mark that okay these words they come in the uh, bucket of positive sentiments or the other words the, let's say a set of words come under the uh, bucket of negative sentiments and then the model is trained and accordingly the model is able to identify whether the uh, reviews or comments they are positive or negative or neutral now the third type of labeling is the document labeling uh, again so this is document classification in line with image classification and text classification now where, where we identify the record or label the record as a whole so this is a pdf file this, this, this can contain text can contain images so these are the rich records so now in the document classification we are annotating or labeling the record as a whole next is key value extraction that is also a type of this uh, document labeling only now what is this key value extraction here is here a, a pdf or image it contains the text as well as it contains uh, it, it may contain an image also so what is going on here is all whatever the text or image that you see here that that will be identified first and then we can assign a sing single label to multiple entities for example let's say uh, this shipping address the one that you see on in, in gray color here so th this complete these are different entities of address so we can select all these together and we can mark these or we can label them as address so address will become key it, uh, and all these um, the individual boxes the rectangles that you see here these will become values corresponding to that key now let me tell you one, uh, one use case for this is for this uh, uh, we all we all get uh, bills of different kinds at our home for example let's say the internet bill we are getting so the person these days everything has been automated we get it online but there are still some areas where uh, the automation is not there and the person manually comes to your place and they uh, i mean that person delivers the bill to you what if the person who has to pay the bill he is not uh, i mean he doesn't know about this online process so in such cases these key, key value things they become very much important so what we can do is we can just click an image of the bill and then we can uh, we can pass it uh, we can feed this to a system so there what we will do is the system will automatically identify what is the bill amount because with we we tell the system that okay this is a logo this is the address this is the bill uh, this is the bill amount taxes and all those things we train the model like that and so that the model will, will will be able to tell us that okay this is the bill amount and then that amount can be paid automatically so uh, this is about this uh, key value extraction
Now, once the data is labeled, there should be a way. I mean, I have been saying that we feed this data to uh, the AI and ML models, and that can only be done if we export the data. And uh, then OC within this OCI data labeling service, uh, we can export our data set. Again, the data set can, can contain the labeled as well as unlabeled records. So here we provide an option whether do you want to include this unlabeled records and or not while exporting. So if this is if this is checked, then the unlabeled will also be a part of uh, unlabeled records will also be part of the data set, and this data set can be exported in uh, one of these export formats: JSON, LEO, LO, COCO, Pascal. And then once this is exported, this can be uh, used to train the AI and ML models. Now, what is uh, who are the uh, people who will be using this data labeling service? So primarily, we have uh, three sets of people who are using one are uh, the, the first uh, set is they con that consists of the data scientists. They'll uh, they can use this labeled data uh, to just train the models. And then the ML engineers, they can also create data sets because if they have to fine tune their uh, models, uh, so they, they can use our service. And third one is annotators who, who have uh, I mean, they are generally annotators. They are hired by companies to just label their data. So these are broadly the three uh, ca category of people who are using uh, a data labeling service. So now this uh, this is enough of the theory for the day. So we have discussed a lot about uh, data labeling, uh, and now let's see things in action. So before logging to any, uh, uh, I mean, before lo uh, logging into any of the OCI services, we should have a cloud login so that we get an access to our OCI console. And Oracle provides uh, two types of accounts. One is the free tier account and the paid account. And the prerequisites that that, uh, that uh, for these types of accounts are, firstly, we should have a cloud account team. This is also called tenancy. And then the username and password. Once we have all those things, then we have to go to cloud.oracle.com and then we have to input the account name or it is also called tenancy. And within the tenancy, we have the users created. And after that, once you input the uh, tenancy name here, click on next. And then this is the within the tenancy, you, uh, I mean, whatever the identity provider we have, that will be uh, shown. And then we can click on continue. And here the user can input the username and password, which was created in the previous step. And then you, uh, this, this, is, this completes the signing process of the uh, OCA console. And here in this now hamburger menu, there will be different services listed. And we can go to this uh, uh, data labeling service within the machine learning head. Uh, now we'll be talking about we'll be now actually showing you how to label the data and how to train our model using that labeled data and now the further session is divided into two parts where in the first part we'll be using dls to label the data set and in uh, that shruti will be covering uh, shruti Mathur will be covering that and the second half we'll be using vision to create and <clears throat> uh, to create a model and train that model ranjit will be covering the same okay so now it's time for shruti to take over so she so that she can explain how to uh, label the data using data labeling service over to you shruti thank you so much kagan uh, for uh, for an awesome introduction uh, a very warm welcome to you all i'll start sharing my screen with you i hope this screen is visible so uh, again, a very warm welcome to you all. I'm Shruti Mathur, and I'm working as a senior member of technical staff uh, with DLS team based out of IDC. So as Gagan has already mentioned that today we have divided the session into two parts. The very first part is where we'll be talking about how to use data labeling service to bulk label a data set. And going forward uh, in the second part, uh, we'll be using the same data set uh, to train a AI vision model. So the objective in the first part is going to be uh, able to create an object storage bucket, load images from your local machine into the bucket, and then we should be able to create a data labeling service data set and bulk label the images that will load it into the object storage bucket. Now, as already shared with you all, that for uh, there are few prerequisite in order to achieve the objectives I've just mentioned. The first being uh, you should have uh, either a paid or a free uh, Oracle Cloud account. Once you have logged in uh, uh, into Oracle account, the second uh, thing which is required for, uh, for the lab today 
is to ensure that you have OCI CLI installed on your machines. Um, in case you don't have OCI CLI installed your machines, uh, you can use the instructions provided on the page here to do the setup. Once that is being done, please ensure that you have Python SDK installed on the machine. And again, if, uh, if that is not on your machine, uh, you can follow the steps mentioned in the link, uh, link out here to the setup. Please note uh, in this lab, I'll be using Python 3 for all the activities. So I'll, I'll be sharing uh, the, the link of this page in the chat with you all. Okay, so I, I see Jane has already shared. Uh, thank you so much, Jane. Now, uh, once, once the prerequisites, know, uh, all these things are in place on your local machine, uh, to start working with data labeling service, uh, we need to download data, data set. Right, and the link out here, uh, uh, you can use this link to download the data set. Once you click on the link, you will be redirected uh, to an object storage bucket uh, and the download will become uh, will begin. Okay, so I already have downloaded the zip file on my machine. I'll show how it looks. Yeah. So in the zip file, uh, it contains biomedical images they are, which are already separated into three subfolders. So as you can see, the folder contains three subfolders by the name of stripe, debris, and cell. And under each subfolder, the images, they have already been classified. So say image number 81, 81.jpg is that of a stripe. Similarly, under debris, image number uh, 9581, it has been, uh, they have been classified as debris. And then cell. So this is the, uh, the structure of the zip file. Uh, and this uh, data, we will be using this data to upload the images to object storage and we'll create a label data set using TLS and then custom bulk, uh, bulk labeling code. So uh, once you have the prerequisite and the data set, let's deep dive again and uh, log into the OCI console. Once you have signed up for uh, Oracle Cloud account, you can use the credentials to log in into Oracle Cloud and you'll land up on the, uh, on the main page of OCI console, where you can see uh, on your left side, you have a hamburger menu uh, providing all the uh, services which cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud provides. Now, before we start using OCI data labeling service, you or your tenancy administrator should set up following policies uh, in order for data labeling service to work properly. So the very first step which is required is we need to provision a compartment uh, which will host all the resources which is required for this lab. So when you click on the menu, service menu, under identity and security, you should see a link for compartments. And you should, uh, we can click on the compartments. And you can click on create compartment. You can provide a name for a compartment, provide a description. And then you can click on create compartment. Once you do that, uh, a compartment will be created. And what you require is once the compartment is created, you need the OSID of the compartment. So as you see, I've already created uh, a compartment by the name of Live Lab. So as you can see, I've already created a compartment by the name of Live Lab, and it has an OSID which has been created, and we have to copy this OSID for further use. It will be required uh, during our session. We can uh, keep a note of it. 
Now, compartments are a way of uh, logically uh, categorizing the resources as per your use case or business requirement. So whatever resources which I'm going to uh, create for the live lab will be under this live lab compartment. Now, once the compartment has been created, what we need to do is, again, we need to create a group. Again, uh, under identity and security, uh, you can go to groups. And you can click on create group. You can provide a name. And then once you create on uh, where once you click on create button, you should be able to see the group which you have already created. So again, uh, for the uh, for uh, for the use today, I have already uh, created a group which is by the name of image classification. Once the group has been created, uh, what we can do is we can add users to the group. Now this is my group. When I click on this group. I can see uh, the OSIR of the, uh, the group, and I can see that a few users have already been added to the group. I can go ahead and add user. Say I want to use, uh, I want to add another user by the name of Arun. I can do that. Now, uh, once uh, we have created the group and added users to the group, the next step is creating a dynamic group. Again, uh, go to the service menu uh, under identity and security. You need to click on dynamic groups. Uh, once you click on dynamic groups, you need to create dynamic group. Say, And then you need to provide some matching rules uh, for this dynamic group. All right, so uh, these, these rules, they are already mentioned on the page which we have shared with you. So you don't need to worry. What you can do is, see, uh, you can just simply copy this and paste it here, right? So as I said uh, uh, previously in one of the steps that you need to capture the compartment OSID which was created, right? So uh, uh, we need to keep it handy and we need to provide it out here while creating the dynamic group. So I have this OSID handy with me. And then we can click on create group. Now, uh, again, uh, now policies come into picture. Now, uh, why policies are required? We are letting data labeling service to access the object storage bucket which we'll be creating in the compartment live lab. For that, you need to set up few policies so that uh, the data labeling service is able to access the compartment which is under your tenancy. So again, under identity, you need to click on policies. And then you need to create policy. You can provide a, a, a meaningful name to the policy. Sorry. And a description. You want, uh, you can uh, select the compartment. It could be either the root compartment or you can also create it in the live lab compartment. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, select the root compartment. Uh, and then you need to click on manual, uh, show manual editor. Now this will enable you to add 
various policies which will be required, right? Again, as I said, these policies, they are already, uh, the exact policies are shared on the page, which we have, um, uh, we have already uh, shared with you all. So you need to copy these statements, these policy statements, and copy them here. So you see, we are allowing the dynamic group, which, which we just created, to read buckets in the compartment uh, with the OSIP. You need to replace the OSIP with the actual OSIP of the compartment. Similarly, there are a few more statements which you need to add where you allow the dynamic group uh, to read the buckets in the compartment which we have created, which is the compartment uh, live lab. Again, you are uh, providing the group of users which we created right now for live lab to access the buckets in the live lab compartment. So as you see, I already have a, uh, a policy which was created in place. Now, once uh, uh, the groups have been created, the policies are in place, the next step is uh, to create an object storage bucket. For that, we'll go to object storage and archive, and then we'll click on buckets. As you all can see that under the root compartment, there are multiple buckets. Now I'll select the compartment which we just created, uh, which is by the game of live labs. And you can see there's one bucket which already exists. I'll go ahead and create a new bucket. Now this bucket is going to host all the images which are there on my local machine right now. What I'll be doing is I'll be uploading those images into the bucket I'll be creating uh, right now. Uh, so I can provide a name. Uh, you can select uh, the storage tier as default as standard. And then go ahead and click on create button. So this is the new bucket which I have created under the live lab compartment. I'll click on this bucket. This bucket will have a namespace associated with it. But right now we do not see any objects under this bucket, right? Since we have not imported or uploaded any of the images to the bucket which we have just created. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, upload the images from our local machine to the bucket which we have just created right now. For that, we'll navigate to the, we'll open the terminal, and then we need to uh, run a few, uh, uh, we need to run a few commands, right? So, uh, the very first command is you should set up the environment uh, uh, name where we'll export the bucket name. So the bucket name is going to be is going to be the name of the bucket which you have just created. Then you also need to export the compartment ID. Once that is done, you need to export the, the directory which holds the, uh, the data. This is the location of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the folder on your, local, on your local machine which holds the data. So for me, the data is under, um, under desktop and live labs biomedical training data, uh, data. Now, once all this is done, I need to run this command.
so uh, as i mentioned uh, before as well all these commands they are uh, available on this page so you don't need to worry you can simply copy them so this upload usually takes uh, takes a few uh, minutes and let's let's wait for it to complete So if I go to the bucket, which I just created a which classification demo bucket, I will refresh it. I should be able to see uh, cell images out here. So as you can see, these images, they were copied from my local machine onto the object storage bucket. Now, uh, the command which I just ran, I'll just uh, walk through that command uh, to you once. You can see that here we need to provide uh, the bucket name, which we have already set as an environment variable, uh, the directory from where the images are going to be read, the content type of the files. Uh, in our case, it is image uh, JPG. And then uh, we are using object prefix SC. What we have done is, if you see the structure of the, uh, the folder out here, which is there, uh, you see that under a subfolder of uh, cell, I have few images. Now, what I have done is I have prefixed these images with, uh, with alphabet C while uploading it to the object storage bucket. Hence, whatever uh, uh, images, which were those of cells, they have been prefixed with C. Again, uh, to upload the images of Stripe, I'll use a different command where I'll export the, the directory location as that of Stripe. And then running the same command but with a different prefix. Now the prefix here is S. So we need to repeat the step number uh, one for uh, Stripe as well as for debris. That way, all the images which are under the folders of cell, stripe, and debris on a local machine will be uploaded to the object storage bucket. So if I refresh again, So you can see images with uh, with prefix S also uh, being uploaded to the object storage packet. Now remains the debris folder. I'll do it very quickly now again.
here I've provided the object prefix as D. So it is done. All the images which were there on our local is now on the object storage bucket. Just to reiterate, I'll be using these images to create a DLS data set now. So the next task is to create a data labeling service data set. For that purpose, uh, I'll again go to the service menu and under analytics and AI, I'll click on data labeling under machine learning. One thing which you need to uh, be aware of is whenever uh, you're doing this uh, live lab, live lab hands-on, uh, you should be uh, very much aware the, uh, about the compartment which you're using. So you should always use the compartment which you have created or which you have created the policies for. Otherwise, the things might not, not work appropriately. So I created uh, the object storage bucket in the compartment, which was, uh, sorry, in the bucket, which was under the compartment live lab. Similarly, uh, I'll create a data set under the same compartment. So uh, once I navigate to data labeling service homepage, I'll click on create data set button. And I'll, uh, I'll provide a name for, uh, uh, for my data set, say image classification demo data set. Uh, labeling instructions uh, come into picture when you would uh, want uh, the labelers who are using uh, the data, uh, when you would want them to follow a few instructions, right? So in that, in those scenarios, uh, labeling instructions will come into picture. Now, uh, my data, which I have just uploaded into the object storage bucket, um, it is of uh, the format is images. And what I'm doing is I'm doing uh, a a classification it's a single label right uh, the images are either that of cell or they are either debris or they are of that of stripe so it's a single label uh, classification uh, once i provide all these informations i can uh, click on the next button now when i click on next button uh, i'm I, uh, the service asks you whether you want to upload local files or you want to select the files from your object storage bucket Either way could be done. We could either upload the files uh, from our lo local machine uh, to a sub object storage bucket location, and then the service will uh, read from that particular location. But in our live lab, since we have already created a object storage bucket, I'll select the second option. So I'm selecting select from object storage. Here, you can see the compartment is coming. It is coming as live lab. Right, but you can see all the other compartments also coming. So I'll select the live lab compartment, which has my bucket with the data. And then I'll select the, the bucket name, which has the data over which I want to create a data labeling service data set. So as you see, once I uh, once I select the bucket uh, hosting the data. Uh, it provides me with preview of the data which is there in the storage uh, bucket. Now, um, as part of DLS, uh, you need to provide uh, labels, right? So these labels, they need to be predefined. So as I am aware while creating my data set that my, my data consists of three labels at present, one being cell, the other when uh, the other is debris, and then Stripe. So I have predefined these labels. And then I click on create button. The last screen, it will ask you to review the details of the data set which you are going to uh, create. And if everything is all right, you can click on the create button. If you find something is amiss, you can uh, click on the previous button and correct the, uh, correct the error if any.
So uh, generation of data set takes a few seconds. As you see, the status is uh, creating right now. I'll quickly go and show you one of the data set which I have already created. So once our, uh, uh, our demo data set is ready, you'll see something like this, right? But the status will be unlabeled because we have not labeled it right now. So, so image classification demo data set, I'll click on this. Now again, you need to uh, take note of, uh, of the O set for the data set which has been created. This is required for further purpose, right? So I have just noted down the OSID uh, of the data set, which is uh, uh, being created. Now, uh, meanwhile, uh, till the time the data set gets created, I'll quickly tell you what to do uh, to populate the data set, which we have created right now. From the uh, from the object storage bucket, right? So, if I go to this page, so in this step two, uh, you have been provided a link uh, for the bulk labeling tool, which we'll be using to uh, label the data set uh, in DLS right now. Once you click on this link. A GitHub repository will open and you can download the code, download zip file. Once you click on download zip, you can unzip and the folder will uh, look something like this. So this bulk labeling utility uh, is used to kind of uh, upload uh, or label the data set uh, uh, in the data labeling service. This utility will have a config.py where you need to make some changes. Now, what you need to do is uh, you need to provide the compartment ID. Now this compartment ID is going to be the compartment uh, OZ of the compartment, which we just created for the live lab. So I'll just edit this config.py, which is there in my our OCI DLS bulk labeling uh, main utility. Again, uh, as I said that we need to take a note of the data set which uh, was being created in DLS. The OSID I copied already, and then I need to provide that OSID in the config.py here. You need also to provide the labels which we have already provided on the OCI console data labeling service uh, screen, right? So as you all remember that I have provided the labels while creating the data set and these labels were cell, stripe, debris. Then you have to select the labeling uh, algorithm as first, lab, uh, first letter. So these are a few modifications which you'll need to make into the config.py uh, file. Let me just quickly check the status of our data set. So, so as you see, um, that the files are being read from the object storage bucket, but the status of these files are unlabeled. Now, when I uh, when I use the utility, which are uh, 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 the GitHub utility, uh, that GitHub uh, utility will be responsible for labeling this uh, uh, this particular file. And how it does it, it will check the prefix. If the prefix contains S, it will label it Stripe. If the prefix contains C, it will label, it will assume it is a, a cell. And similarly for debris, if a prefix contain uh, D, 
it will assume it's a debris image, right? So on this page, uh, we can, I'll also show how uh, the console looks like, data labeling service console. So I've clicked on one of the images and you can see that there are three options coming under labels. These options, these labels were provided at the time when I created the data set. Now, one way is either I can manually go on each image and I can uh, label them manually. Say this is a stripe. If I know, I can select stripe, save, and then go to next. Else, what I can do is I know that I have already prefixed my uh, files or identified my files, and I know that uh, the files containing prefix S, they have to be labeled as stripe. And I will uh, run this utility, which will do the same for me. So I then don't have to go on the console UI and uh, manually label them. So as you see that my data set is in active state and I can uh, start labeling these images, right? Another thing to notice, all the files, there are around 300 files and uh, none of them uh, have been labeled right now. So I'll, I'll quickly start labeling. Now, uh, to use the utility, what you need to do is, uh, once you have made the changes to config.py, where we have mentioned the compartment ID and the dataset ID, I need to navigate to the folder which has my code. So, so you can see I've already navigated uh, to the folder which uh, hosts uh, the GitHub code. And here I have main.py. I need to simply run this main.py. Just, uh, just to reiterate, be sure that you're providing the correct values for compartment ID and data set ID. So uh, I'll click on. Uh, as you have 300 files, this will, this will take some time again. So uh, meanwhile, I can show you uh, a data set which I have labeled using the same utility. So you can see that uh, it has started labeling, right? So navigate to an existing data set. Uh, this one. So I have labeled this data set using the same lit, uh, utility I'm talking about right now. So as you see uh, in the background, uh, the tool is working and we can see that out of 314 images, they have been labeled now. So if I click on one of the labeled uh, document, we can see that it has been labeled as stripe. So uh, we can in real time check the status, right? Now again, uh, 24 have been labeled. It'll take some time, a uh, few more seconds to label all the 300. So this bulk labeling utility, you know, it helps uh, the users to quickly onboard to data labeling service uh, and start using it. So you can see instead of manually uh, uh, labeling so much, uh, such a, a great number of uh, uh, files, 
from the console, it is uh, easier to uh, run a utility and uh, label them. So once the, uh, the process end, I'll show, uh, I'll show you all uh, how uh, the data set will look. So uh, this data set was uh, created using the same, um, uh, same bulk utility I'm talking about. And you can see that once the process ends, all the entire 300 uh, records will be labeled. And uh, if I click on any of the labeled data set, it'll, it'll appropriately tell me What the image belongs to. So this is a stripe. Similarly, if I can show you something out of a cell. So if I click on this image, you can see it has been labeled as cell since it has a prefix of C, right? So, uh, now, uh, this is the end of part one uh, of the demo. Uh, I'll be handing it uh, over to Ranjit to continue the same. Thank you so much. Ranjit, over to you. Thank you, Shruti. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ranjit, and uh, I am an ML engineer here at OCI uh, Data and AI Org. So uh, let me share my screen meanwhile. Right, so I will be covering part two of this live lab, which is uh, primarily training a uh, AI vision model uh, in a no code uh, fashion. Uh, so this is again going to take 30 more minutes, uh, as they say, but uh, we will be fast forwarding the actual uh, training part as it takes 20 minutes or so for training the model. So we will fast forward that part and cover everything else. Um, so a quick recap of what we have seen so far. Uh, we have seen that uh, we were able to create a data set inside the data labeling service. The data labeling service um, has capabilities to label your data for image classification and object detection and for language use cases such as NER and um, uh, text classification as well as documents. Uh, for this live lab, we had uh, chosen the use case of image classification and uh, Shruti created a data set um, called uh, image classification demo data set, which uh, is, is fully labeled and ready for consumption for uh, model training. So uh, this data set has three uh, labels as uh, Shruti has already mentioned, uh, and this is coming from a biomedical data set. So uh, uh, let's let's uh, get started and um, uh, get going on training this this model. Um, so to begin with, we need some policies uh, for the sake of uh, in the interest of time. I have already created these policies. Uh, the policies lets the user to use the vision family service inside OCI because essentially we are using uh, these vision services as well as the object family um, inside OCI because the data set is primarily coming from an object bucket and hence these policies are required. Um, I have created these policies beforehand um, and for a quick reference, this is how it looks when you create these policies inside the IAM um, service of OCI. Um, Post this, we need to go ahead to the vision uh, 
service uh, inside the OCI console. And uh, this is really a no code way of creating a vision model. Um, uh, now we will be creating for this use case, for this session, we will be creating a image classification model. So this is all no code um, via, via clicks and via console. Um, there is another stack to, to create uh, uh, vision models. If you have data science flair and you are into data science, that will be using notebooks. I'll talk a little bit about that later um, towards the end. But for now, we will be using these uh, uh, no code vision based methods to create a, a vision model. So uh, we need to um, head to the vision service inside OCI. Uh, the way to do that would be to uh, click the hamburger menu again and uh, click the analytics and AI. And we have a bunch of AI services. We need to select vision. Right. So this is the console uh, that you see um, for the vision service. And you have a set of pre-baked services which are ready for consumption. Uh, and if your use case is pretty generic, you could use these th these services uh, directly. But in our case, since our, um, our data set is very domain specific and very um, uh, customized, uh, uh, we would need to create a custom model uh, on, on the data set. So the way to do that would be to go to the custom model sections and create a project. Um, a project is basically um, a logical uh, space for your uh, models. Um, and even otherwise, projects are, are pretty common across OCI services, uh, at least in data science and, uh, uh, and AI. So they basically house uh, your experiments, your models, and uh, all the logical entities together. So we need to create a project here. Let me do that. Um, let me select this name. So this takes a little bit of time uh, for creation of uh, this project. Okay, so this is active and created now. Uh, once the project uh, is created, we would then need to create the custom model. Um, so let's uh, refer the session again. Right, so uh, we are going to create an image classification custom model here. So you can select the create model here. Uh, and the type would be image classification, but there are other capabilities here. Uh, you could have also trained uh, an object detection model or document classification model or key value detection model um, also. Uh, but then, of course, you would have had to uh, create a data set which is compliant with these use cases. Uh, so, for example, if you were to create a, a, an object detection model, uh, you should have created a data set beforehand in DLS, data labeling service, with, uh, with bounding boxes, annotations on these images. And likewise for other kind of use cases. So here we are going to select image classification. And uh, remember that uh, we created this data set called uh, image classification demo data set. Uh, the vision model is directly integrated with uh, the uh, data labeling service. So you could simply select a data set, right? Um, and select the data source as data labeling service. Um, and uh, under the same compartment, your data sets will appear. I only have one, so only one appears here. Uh, image classification demo, demo data set. Uh, so you could then select the data set and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, um, also wanted to call out that uh, uh, data labeling service uh, is not the only way you could uh, using data set from data labeling service is not the only way you could train a model here. So you could also um, select your data set from the object storage. 
So you can select uh, the uh, the object storage which has uh, your data set. And of course, you would you would need to comply with the format the, that the Vision Service expects for the annotation files, uh, which is JSNL. So in case you have that file, you could directly point out to a JSNL file and your data set on object storage. And that's also another approach to sort of ingest the training data into this pipeline. So for now, for this live, live lab, we are going to select the data labeling service. Uh, the other option here is to create a new data set. Now this is this is again uh, this is again when you don't have a data set yet, this will only read out you back to the data labeling service wherein you can you know create a data set and label it and come back here. So uh, we are going uh, we are going ahead with this data set, uh, um, and we need to uh, provide a model here so we can say image classification model two or something. Uh, let's provide a description. Uh, the training duration here is uh, basically uh, the recommended mode is to is to allow the model to be trained for 24 hours. Uh, the quick mode there is uh, it only takes about uh, an hour, or you could uh, specify your uh, training time uh, with at least half an hour. Uh, so there is a trade off between these training duration. The higher the training duration, the better the model. Um, because the model would then go, uh, would then undergo a few extra epochs and few more rounds of optimization. So there is a trade-off, but you can quickly try out the uh, quick mode. Um, or if 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 it 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 is uh, if it if it's okay with you, you can also use the recommended mode. So um, I think that's pretty much it for creating a training a model. So you can select. Uh, uh, you can then review the model training parameters and then hit the create and train button. So uh, this has accepted now uh, a training uh, request uh, for that particular data set. And this normally takes, uh, since we have 300 images or, or, or around 300 images, this is going to take around 20 minutes or so uh, for uh, this model to be fully trained. Um, so um, we will not be waiting for, uh, we will not be waiting uh, for this uh, model training to finish. Um, and you can basically track the completion process and uh, and at the end you will also see the training metrics and uh, the, the, um, the accuracy of your model. So uh, let's take a look at uh, one of the models that I trained yesterday um, with the same data set. Um, and which is already trained. So this is how uh, it will look once the model training has finished. Um, you have the model here and you can basically uh, click to see the um, the uh, various parameters of these models in terms of its um, evaluation metrics. So since this is a classification problem, you see all the usual metrics uh, uh, associated with the classification problem like uh, precision, recall, and F1 score. A uh, small set of data. So this these evaluation metrics are coming from a small test data set that is carved out from the uh, um, uh, from the data set that we gave, uh, which is around 10%. Um, and uh, you could also see the, the uh, uh, label specific uh, metrics here. Uh, again, F1 scores and precision and recalls and the confidence uh, threshold that, is, that has been used to maximize these metrics. Um, so this is a good reference. Um, uh, these thresholds are a good reference in case you want to uh, accept or reject the suggestion from the model. Um, so you can then uh, head towards the analyze um, section of the, um, uh, the model, wherein you can test your model with few sample images. Um, so uh, let me just give a few sample images here. So I have few test images. This one is from a cell. So you could see that the model performs well and classifies it correctly um, as a cell type. 
Um, you could do some more testing here uh, before basically accepting it. Right, so this is again classified correctly as a debris um, type. Uh, so this is the way you kind of uh, analyze your uh, image. Uh, the response looks something like this. Um, the uh, the individual labels uh, with their associated confidence uh, uh, levels, and then the overall ontology of uh, your label set. Um, you can also use the analyze image um, uh, uh, API to consume this uh, this model into your downstream application, and then you could use uh, the uh, the SDKs, the Java SDKs or uh, Python SDKs to basically uh, consume this. And you could do all of this by using only the model ID, the OSET of the model that you have trained. Um, and uh, uh, that should be enough. Um, right, so that's pretty, that's how you create a, a custom model here in Vision. Let me refer back to the uh, live lab session. So we covered the training part and we covered the test part. Yeah. So I think that's all. Um, uh, I just also wanted to call out that although the audience for this particular uh, use case, like using the no-code way of uh, training a model, is are, are people with little or or no knowledge of data science. Uh, but then, if you are into data science and uh, you want to sort of write code and uh, train your model uh, yourself. You could uh, you could use the data science notebooks uh, um, uh, a service from OCI console, um, and uh, you could then you know create a, a notebook session, and then you could use one of our libraries called ADS um, uh, Accelerated Data Science Library, with which you could visualize and uh, download the data from the data labeling service. Um, and you also get some additional formats with the with the data uh, sets created using uh, data labeling service. For example, for object detection, you get uh, uh, along with JSON, you also get uh, standard formats such as YOLO and and Coco and 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 Pascal VOC format. For language use cases, you you get uh, 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 bio format and spacey format. So you could fetch uh, the data from the data labeling service. And write your own code um, um, on these notebooks uh, with this um, ADS uh, integration, um, and and there you are free to sort of use any state of the art model uh, for your use case. So that's the other stack. Uh, if you are into, um, if if you have, uh, if you are from the data science background, but then uh, if if not, uh, uh, for vision at least you could use the. A vision uh, um, custom model service to um, uh, uh, train a model from the data labeling service uh, data set. Okay, so that's all uh, that I had. Um, so in, in summary, we saw the data set uh, creation part uh, from the data labeling service. And then uh, using the same data set, uh, we saw how we can train um, a model uh, let me see if this has come up. No, this is still getting trained. Um, so yeah, so uh, uh, using the vision service, we saw how how easily we can sort of create a, a, a image classification model uh, using just a few clicks. All right, so that's all from my side. Thank you, everybody. That was a great session today. Um, we've had a lot of questions and I think we've covered most of them. Any we've missed, we will get back to you following the event. It has been recorded today and we will share the recording with you. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you at the next session. Thank you and goodbye.